welcome to the DTC Insider Podcast, where online business owners come to find actionable tips and tactics to grow their businesses. Now, here's your host, Brian Roizental. Hey, welcome to another episode of the DTC Insider Podcast. I'm Brian Roizental, your host, and today... I'm going to interview Dario Markovic. He's the CEO of Eric Javis since 2020, company he saved, increasing overall revenue by 400%, not four, not 40, 400% in less than two, in less than three years, two years and a half, actually. So that's awesome. And we are going to chat about it in a sec. But before doing that, let me tell you that this episode is brought to you by BSR Digital. By now, I'm sure most of you know that customer acquisition costs are going up. There's lack of tracking. Attribution is driving you nuts. And audience sizes are getting smaller after the iOS 14 update. If that wasn't enough, there are other factors such as the recession and supply chain issues making it harder than ever to grow your e-commerce brand. That's why we need to understand that it's really important to level up the marketing and design that solid strategy as what used to work doesn't anymore. Here at BSR Digital, we have been helping countless e-commerce brands that wanted to scale their business to the next level through paid ads and email marketing for over a decade. So if you want to learn more about us, please visit us at bsrdigital.com or you can email us at hello at bsrdigital.com. Now, as promised, I have Dario here with me. Hey, Dario, thanks for being on the show. Hi, right, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So I'm very excited about this one because uh, with all due respect, I want to pick your brain because I think there could be very valuable lessons for everyone listening or watching this. So I would love you to start by telling the audience more about you, your background, and your story. Sure. Well, I'm, um, you know, I grew up on, uh, in Switzerland, Europe. Um, I then had a, had a had time I was living in South America because uh, I met my uh, wife there uh, actually in South Africa and I moved to, uh, I was living in Chile in South America for a while uh, so I was I was living in different continents and I was there Jerry's is in New York so I'm, I'm spending a lot of time there as well and so so yeah uh, I started actually back in finance in Switzerland um, right nothing to do with what I do now. Um, I was working as a controller in a, an energy company, very early, dry, straightforward. Um, you know, I was like aiming at perhaps, you know, Swiss banking jobs, et cetera, but never really ended up there. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, kind of my wife said, Hey, you know, I, I don't want to go to Switzerland. You had to come to Chile. And I was like, okay, uh, let me go there. And then, you know, kind of, we started, uh, working together, um, different businesses, um well yeah we started to work with brands uh, actually more in the fashion space we had an academy i kind of you know well, was like giving courses to you know in, in fashion design and, and makeup and so on i think anything related to fashion and at the same time we were, were working with um companies kind of doing events for them pr and um, yeah, it's, that's when I kind of you know entered as well more into um, digital marketing. Uh, it was back in um, 2014. Uh, yeah, pretty much nine years now. And and yeah, I've been working um, since then with with really e-commerce, digital marketing, PR, uh, and marketing in general. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's been great. It, I love what I do. Um, and and and. Yeah, and, and how I ended up in, in Eric Chet, it's it's a uh, it's a little bit of a different story, but uh, but yeah, that's that's you know where it kind of came from, and a little bit of background on me. Okay, if you want to go for it, please go ahead. I mean, how you ended up working for? for that sure, thing. yeah. Um, that was a uh, Eric Chet. It's uh, I was working with um, what Don Chela was working with um, his um, his um, partner Eric Chet. It has um, as a Presence in Chile as a, as a personality, as a as a, as a as a influencer or uh, as a, um, a TV show uh, star. So he hired us to do events and appear in magazines and TVs, um, and that's we kind of you know ended up knowing each other. And um, I met Eric, and since then we kind of stayed friends. We 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 you know 
met several times. And um, and when, well, when the pandemic started, um, I really knew nothing about the hat business and Eric Chavez business and what they do. I just obviously I knew what they do, but I didn't know, like, you know about the business. And, and they kind of reached out and said, hey, you know, we're in big trouble. Um, we, we, you know, we, we obviously, the focus of the company the last 35 years was really selling to big retailers, uh, Nordstrom, Neiman's, Le- Bloomingdale's, and um, there wasn't really a presence to go direct to the consumer. And um, yeah, there was r- really not much time left. Um, and, you know, obviously most of the big retailers, they have a consignment model, which means, you know, they can return goods uh, at any moment throughout the year if they don't sell them. Um, so, so that was the case, actually, the time when they will start taking the, the goods, which is March, that's where, where the pandemic started and they kind of canceled all that. So, um, and as you, as you probably know, fashion business is really heavy inventory, um, you know, you have to invest first a lot and, um, you, you wait till, you know, there's, there's a time, you know, to wait for, for payments coming in, especially as well with the, with the retailers that. They, you know, net sixty, net ninety. So, so yeah, I was. It was. Uh, it was something we had to. I mean, say, hey, come, can you help out? And um, it's we acted fast in month month two. We we really ended up creating Shopify and and going all in and and and, and thanks God it really resulted well. Um, and since then it's kind of been a, a huge uptrend in 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 uh you know switch also from from wholesale to 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 direct to consumer however we ended up you know saving a lot of wholesale uh business as well we're growing both channels now which is great awesome so thank you for sharing your story um for everyone listening or watching uh i would love you to pay attention to this conversation because i don't know you might be in this situation or uh, you've been in this situation too, or you know someone that is in this situation. So I think what Dario is going to share next could be really helpful for you. No pressure, Dario, <laughs> but I think it could be really helpful for, for you guys listening or watching. So I would love if you don't mind to break down the the, the journey. I mean, you arrived in um, the in the company, it was 2020, the pandemic started, and they say, hey, we don't have much left. What do we do? What, what do you remember what went through your mind back then when you learned about that situation? Um, obviously, I was, you know, while I was work, working with companies, with big ones as well, back in Chile, um, you know, obviously, you, your, your agency owner, um, you know, is going straight to hate Facebook ads, Google ads. Um, that was like the first thing, not, not, we're not talking about email, SMS retention, all that, not at all. We're just talking, go ahead and acquire customers. And that was like my first thing. Hey, you have to go ahead and, and, and just go and get, get those customers. Um, and there was this brand awareness, the brand is around 35 years. So there's a lot of customers that, that are buying or bought or whatever bought in those you new know, Nordstrom stores throughout the last 30 years. So, you know, they would see your jets that that would be as well. Hey, you know, I know this brand. Uh, I used to buy it. Um, and then I can go ahead and buy it now online, which is great. And so that was the first thing. Hey, go to the paid channels, which is, uh, you know, get the traffic to the website. And um, that was like the first thing we did. And that, um, you know, that obviously, you know, you know, times change back then was totally different uh, now. You know, you, in the introduction, you mentioned how, how things totally changed. Uh, but then it was still, you know, easier, I would say, um, you know, Facebook with all, with yeah. all the magic they had, um, you know, Google as well, obviously. Um, so it was um, it was much easier to acquire customers at the much, much, much lower cost. And, and we were able to be very aggressive and started to acquire cost, customers at the very, really low cost. And um, that's the first thing with it. Um, right. Now, uh, obviously, um, you know, I, I would say that's the first thing you have to do today. And you can't go ahead and just say, you know, I will try to do it organically or or whatever. I'll try to, you know, not spend much money. And 
you know, it's fortunately, it's not even for a brand like Eritrea that had that brand brand recognition. It's possible, you know, if if you wouldn't run any any uh, advertisement, you would have almost zero sales. It's it's crazy. It's just the environment we live in, and you know, everyone is bombarded with 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 ads or with information from all sides, and um, you know, a lot of people act, uh, you know, with, on that. So yeah. so you have to, you know, have a have a good strategy top of funnel. And um, but today, India, as you know, probably Brian, you know, things totally changed. You have to have a really different approach, uh, normally approach to be able to to maintain and to acquire customer at the cost that that's still profitable, and uh, the return is there. And so, but you have uh, I would say you have to stay up, start from paid and then search paid, yeah. and obviously work uh, at, at the other channels as well. Hundred <clears throat> percent. So. Basically, if I got it right, just to clarify, and please let me know if I got it wrong. The company is a well-established company that has been around for 37, 38 years, right? Um, yeah. And they have been mainly or uh, solely doing uh, B2B, right? Not B2B. They didn't, they didn't have like an e-commerce, nothing, right? Or they it was yeah, a, a channel for them. That they you had an e-commerce. Uh... The e-commerce did what we do today in a day on a yearly basis. Right. Um, they were selling a little bit on Amazon as well, which is really, really nothing. That was really the B2C channel. Okay. Um, but yeah, again, it was really uh, having the website there. More as a presentation, but transactions or traffic wise, again, it was like a day that we do revenue now. They did on a yearly basis, which is great. So I'd love to ask you the following, if you don't mind, because e-commerce i think there are many you know many ways of looking at an e-commerce one could be the storefront you build a shopify or any other platform you know website you upload the products and you do the campaigns and boom you have an e-commerce right but the, on the back end there are many things going on so i'm curious about the transformation from b2b to b2c regarding all the internal process, processes because you were doing, I guess, big orders for uh, a small amount of, you know, companies compared to, you know, doing B2C, which is small orders for a higher volume. So do you need to change things internally? Processes, departments, hires? Oh, yeah, it's a very good question. Totally. Uh, we were going through the transformation um, you know, all the stuff that they're filming for, for the wholesale uh, customers, they were not really, you know, they were not really trained or they had an idea. How do we fulfill e-commerce orders? Uh, sometimes you, you get an order from wholesale customers that it's for the next month. So you have time, you know, and you can wait for a DTC order to go out, you know, next month or in a week, you know, um, and, and there's a certain, you know, way to pack it. There's a certain way to present it, right? Um, it's not those big boxes that you send to the retailer and they're, they're later going and then doing the merchandise, which is fine. But um, so you have to restructure internally, uh, bring in folks that, that um, well, unfortunately get rid of folks that, that are not really, you know, up to date with, with what's going on online. So that's been, it has been hard, right? Uh, you know, there were workers that, that have been there for the past 20 years. So that's been very hard. So you have to just, but you have to, you know, make that cut and you have to restructure the whole dynamic to be able to to tailor to that um, audience um, and to fulfill fast, to fulfill, you know, uh, at the level that we price on, uh, which is more the premium level. Um, so that that has been a very tough time. But that's that took us, you know, at least three to six months. To take the first step or you know to to make a, a approach to the right direction so it's not something you can do you know in a month or two and uh, unfortunately not so it was something that we you know started to implement month three and then uh, obviously for me it was new i had to learn what's going on um internally so you know bringing a newer erp system because um you know you have to have one centralized inventory so uh you know the, the wholesalers are pulling through an EDI, the orders in. Um, so you have to be sure you're not all selling at Shopify. So you have to have the tools and set, you know, so to ERP to say, hey, what ERP system is the best? And, you know, what, what EDI partner is the best? How long does the implementation go? 
um, and so on and so on. So, so really, the first six months to the year was just turning, you know, directions. Um, and at the same time, you have to maintain, you know, the levels to, you know, sell and 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 replace the losses on the wholesale side. Those listening that might be in your position or know somebody that is in the position you were at back then. I mean, the switch from B2B to B2C, right? Or even starting, you know, uh, their B2C brand. What's the main, what are, what could you say that the key areas for that change to be successful where, I mean, it could be fulfillment, it could be this customer success department. What do you think that were the key areas that made these possible? I think I think it has to be you know obviously you you have to kind of see where what what level you are right now in your business to be to determine hey do I focus first on you know on on on, on logistics you know fulfillment and do I want to use a three PL uh, you know we're we're using now a three PL after two years we decided hey we have to have a three PL we we outgrew the space. Um, and, and it would just make more sense, right? Um, so, and, and obviously cost-wise and then be more efficient and, and focus on, on, you know, tasks that, that would you know, just grow, right? And not just, you know, unfortunately managing, you know, logistics. Maybe that's your, your point. Maybe it's, um, it's customer service. That's something we, in the beginning, you know, took decision, you know, I mean, I'm saying here, everything is important. You know, you have to choose where, if you can tackle all of them, that's great. And we were kind of, hey, you know, customer service might come a little bit later. We had to concentrate on, on, on getting the goods out on time, on and getting the customers, you know, the goods um, and, and the way they, they expect it. And, um, you know, post sales, obviously, we, we kind of realized, hey, we had to be better there. So we, we obviously, started to use softwares, uh, we started to track satisfaction, um, policy changes, uh, right? You have to have policy changes. Do I, do I want to offer a 30 you know, uh, day return window? Do I want to offer free shipping? You know, everyone says today, hey, I want to see free shipping. Can you, can you really financially offer that? Uh, you know, uh, in the beginning we didn't, and then we were kind of going step by step. I was like, no, you know, no return. Or we had like really short return window and everything, you know, shipping, shipping was paid. And it was like, okay, now we have to take a step and, you know, above threshold, hey, shipping is free. And then we kind of went from seven days to 30 or 28 days for right now. And, um, and, and so on, you have to kind of see, does it make sense? Uh, for us, it, it's, it's hard because um, even though product is very light, uh, it's dimensional weight is high. So shipping, you know, the costs are, are huge. It's one of the biggest costs in our in the company. So so I, I tackled it that way that I like kind of okay, let's give a step and then let's see it six or, uh, months or a year. Can we go to the level like Amazon, you know, offers or uh, you know, you might never get there, but you, you know, you have to consider it because all of these goods, uh, all of these little you know changes uh, could improve conversion rate. Right? That's what that's what you want, right? You want the customers to to forget your product, you know, to you want them to 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 feel it and see it. And if you are comfortable with your product, then uh, you might convince the customers to to you know to keep the product. And that's what you want. You know, that's um, that's uh, you want to improve their conversion rate. And sometimes I understand if you cannot, you know, do it immediately. Hey, I cannot offer free shipping, free return, thirty day window. I can it's just financially. I can. It's fine. You know. Start to start with the first step, and you will see. You know, after six months, a year, you might, you might, you know, you know, or we might never. But uh, but that's how we approach it. Um, you, we didn't go into uh, oh, let's just change everything. It's just because I wasn't really, you know, sure that 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 will you know maintain us at a level, uh, you know, where where we can control everything, um, you know, uh, from month to month. So that's that's, that's how we approach it. That's an important lesson. I mean, I guess that um, sometimes we want to serve the users or the customers uh, the best way possible. And we go above and beyond. Uh, and probably sometimes we should keep uh, our heads out of water, right? First, and then after 
you know, a, a few months or sometimes years, you know, start, you know, releasing new features or new benefits for the customers. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily need to start that way, right? So um, moving forward in the journey, when did you see the first spike in sales? They said, oh, this is working great. Right away, actually. Hey, you know, week one, we just saw, hey, it's so, you know, so little money. There's so much, you know, possible. We have to be, you know, we have to go after it. So um, that's where we kind of realized immediately. You know, there, there wasn't really much time left. There was like two, two weeks or four weeks left to, you know, really saying, hey, you want to close the company or not. So so we had to act fast. And so it's like, hey, that's working. Let's push it, you know. Um, again, I didn't go again to, to a little bit going back to, you know, tackling all. I didn't go say, OK, we have to have a, a email marketing, you know, all the flows so before we really start. No, just do, you know, the paid search part, you know, in our case, what's Facebook and Google. And then, you know, after a few months, we start, hey, let's use Klaviyo. Let's, you know, what what is the best SMS? Um, you might say, hey, I'm missing out if I don't do it right away. Fine, it might be the case. but if 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 you you know if you can tackle all of it and, and well that's fine but for us it was more you know start you know do pay one first you know, and then you know we have to prove you know, we weren't waiting years but you know we were waiting three to four months until we had all the flows of it is you know you know you 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 probably you know you you work in the mark email marketing side so 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 that's how we approached it you know we we tested you know, hey, what what SMS partner is the best? Is it SMS bump? Is it PostScript? Is it Tentive? Um, so that's how we kind of approached it, and um, and um, it was really working well for us. Every time we introduced a new, you know, retention channel or channel, it it, it produced for us well. And um, but I think you know, going um, going back, it's important that you start to realize that uh, you will need all of these, especially in 2023. And, you know, um, you will need a, a, an approach, overall approach, you know, 360. You can go ahead and say, I'm just going to run, you know, ads and I'm going to be fine. Unfortunately, you know, that that's that was the, actually, that was the case back, you know, when I started, I was like amazed, you know, how, how you can go from zero to a million just running Facebook ads. And that's unfortunately not the case anymore. Uh, unfortunately, I'm saying unfortunately, you know, it's just what, what I used to see. And, you know, it's just today it's not the case anymore. <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. And in fact, we, we discussed that on the show. Uh, there's actually um, a report from 2022 done by the coach at e-commerce fuel, a seven figure plus e-commerce community. Uh, and uh, basically in the report, it's super thorough with numbers. They surveyed 600 plus e-commerce brands and they partnered up with PostScript and many other tools to provide them with data for the report. There's no BS. Uh, it's a very interesting read. Uh, and I will put the links in the, in the show notes for everyone interested in reading it. And basically what it says is that they they take they, it's 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 really long, but one of the relevant parts for this conversation is that they take the top performing brands in a group and the comparison group, right? The rest of the brands in the comparison group. So the difference between of them is not the ROAS, is not the conversion rate, is the branding element, is a branding factor, is the marketing. That's the main differentiator right uh and that got me thinking that many brands in 2023 as you said they think that they will get away with the same old things that used to work for them before all these mass and now things have got harder and brands need to go the extra mile and pay attention to many other things both like for acquisition for retention, but also on the back end, the customer, you know, the customer success department or customer support delivering a good product, having a great offer, uh, uh, live up to their promises, right? So there are many things that e-commerce brands weren't doing back then. So I'm curious about what you guys do because you said that brands, and I agree, need to take a holistic approach. 
So what are you guys doing for the customer acquisition, for example? I mean, we are, we're running now obviously the ads on, on all the channels, um, you know, not perhaps all, all, but we, you know, we're on TikTok, we're on Pinterest, we're on Google, we're on Facebook, we're on oh, Meta, right? That's not Facebook anymore, it's Meta, Meta companies. Um, we, are, we are running, you know, you know, we're using Adro, we're using, um, we're using other programmatic tools. Um, we are, um, we're, we're doing a lot of SEO. Um, um, we are, which we didn't do it at all in the beginning, which there were, there were no recourse, uh, there was no, you know, there was no staff to do it. Uh, there was no, you know, perhaps no budget to, to hire someone. That's fine. But now it's really important for us. SEO. It's very important. And we see, you know, we see the fruits, you know, coming from, for the work that we did the past year. Um, also you have to, you have to put more in, but we see a line going up and, um, that's that's from you know from the perspective bring the customers to the side um and twitter you know reddit we're actually <laughs> on some reddit ads you're trying trying uh trying different you know uh channels um and youtube obviously well, when i say google you know i mean google generally we're not specifically i i guess you know tailored perhaps for linkedin we might test it in the future but i'll test all the channels i'll test all the channels and we we um we 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 decided to have a, a mobile app. Um, I, I received a lot of you know questions. Hey, why would you have a mobile app? Does it make sense? Um, I was obviously asking me the same. I was like, hey, you know, does it make sense to you know spend time and resources in a mobile app? And um, and actually, we 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 ended up doing a mobile app. We, 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 um, we, we're in Shopify, so we decided, hey, there are two or three partners that came in, you know, with, we're kind of considering. And first, we, we decided uh, to go with, with, with one, and we, see, we saw that the dynamic wasn't, you know, they were slow and responding. And it's like, hey, let's go with Tapcart. Uh, I know Shopify is kind of recommending Tapcart as well. And um, it was great. It was a great decision. You know, it's, um, you go for app downloads, you know, all those channels. Um, and sometimes app downloads are cheaper um, than you know than conversions. Um, so, so that's that's the, the 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 you know decisions where you have to start to to take. Um, so, so having a break here. Yeah, that that was a that was a strong one here. <laughs> As you know, does it happen often? No, actually, not that often, but that, as you probably saw, camera was shaking. So, yeah, so. I, I did always see you that you hit it accidentally. No, 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 that, was, that, was a, that, was a, that was a good one. That was a, that was wow. a strong one. I mean, it happens for, for someone that, that doesn't, it's not used to earthquakes. It's happen, it happens quite frequently, but, uh, but that was a few times shaking here. Well, you're uh, taking it just fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, that's, that's on the top of them, but then, you know, loyalty, the loyalty, you know, you have to have a loyalty program. Uh, I think it's a must today. You can, you can decide, Hey, no, I'm, you know, I want to have a loyalty program. Actually, we obviously after a year, we kind of saw, Hey, you know, who, who are the customers and how they behave. And, um, you know, and then we saw, Hey, 40% of our revenue comes from 9% of the customers. Well, that's crazy. Uh, Forty percent of the uh, revenue comes from nine percent of the customers. Yeah. It's actually you know they would say you're doing great job on the remarketing, retargeting, retention side. You don't you're not doing enough on the top of the funnel side. Might be the case, but it's important to have you know to have that information so we kind of kind of see hey customers that buy from us and yeah you know, they're you know we have now thirty two percent you know uh, return rate customer return rate. Hey, that's great. You know, so you know what's you know probably you know, we might get into another topic. You know, what 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 is it worth to me to acquire customers? You know, what should the customer you know acquisition cost? Um, you know, our our AOV is around three hundred dollars, three hundred twenty dollars. Um, so you know, what was it worth? Because we know, you know, we we have loyal customers and they love our products once they have a product. Um. You know, we're, we're, we got into shoes uh, this year. Eric used to do shoes in the 90s. 
but we say, hey, maybe we could cross sell it. And so it's it's all the decisions that you start to take, uh, you know, once you have data as well, right? A, unfortunately, you can't just go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to run Facebook ads or run Google ads or whatever, TikTok, and, you know, then it's fine. No, no, you know, coming back to tab card, I was like, now, why would a customer land on a web page? See, you know, because we have like a, a button down there, like a pop up, you download the app. And, and it was like, we suddenly saw customers that they prefer shopping app. Like, they like it. I'm, it's not my case. You, sometimes, you know, it's not what you think, what you do in your daily life. Everyone is thinking the same way. And you have people, they, they love to, to shop on an app. They love to have their, you know, the purchases in an app, uh, their account in an app. And, and we saw customers, you know, we have a good percentage going through the app. They're buying through that. You know, new customers, existing customers that bought from our website, they're going to, this, to the app and buying through that. Just they perhaps just like the dynamic. So, uh, so sometimes you have to test as well. So that's that's how we, um, you know, obviously email marketing is huge. Uh, I think who doesn't really do email marketing today or effective? Probably you're telling them uh, that with your agency. I mean, it's missing out. It's it's. I mean, if you're not doing email marketing, not doing it correctly. You're just missing out huge, huge. So, so yeah. I mean, of course, this uh, generic comment, it might not be true for everyone, but I think that I'm almost 100% sure that for every brand that gets traffic, they are actually leaving money on the table if they don't do email marketing. And it's easily proven by installing even if they want to do it by themselves installing clavio or any other you know platform and setting up you know welcome series automated flows even if they are not on point just something and you will be amazed by the result and the money you were leaving on the table and of course with doing things right and the more uh emails you have in the list and of course things will grow but even if you start recovering one percent two percent three percent five percent it's more than nothing, right? And people wanted to buy, but it's that, as you said, why are you guys doing things in so many platforms? Because there are many, I mean, the, I mean, people's attention is so spread out right, right now. There are so many bubbles to tap into. Some people like to hang out on, in, on Pinterest or on TikTok, Instagram, or you said it on an app, right? And you don't know where, where to find them. And if that's not enough, they are not. They are probably depending on the on the industry. Not going to commit the first time they see your ad. So if you're not getting back to them through remarketing ad campaigns or even in a more intrusive way through email or SMS, they're not going to buy. You can ex expect them to buy from from the get go, right? Right. Especially especially as well. As all, I mean, I in the past I was like, you know, hey, I don't want to send out too many emails. It, again, this is very, you know, this is very a case. It's, it might be a case for you. You don't want to send out every day an email. And I was like, hey, I want to send out more than one email a week, two emails a week. And then you realize, hey, you know, the customers are really, you know, obviously you have customers subscribing. That's very natural, you know, natural. You have subscribers, you have, you have people that unsubscribe, and you have people that bounce or whatever. But if you don't like engage with them, if you don't remind them that you're there, it, it, it's not about bothering them. It's just being on top of their mind. Hey, I'm here. We have this offer. We have this going on. We have this. And if you say, hey, I want to send an email a month or whatever you, you want to do, it's going to be difficult. You know, it's, it's not it's not, it's not going to work. You have to go after the customers on all the channels. We realized, you know, if you want to be more efficient, Pinterest, top of the funnel, um, wasn't really gen uh, generating you know, sales are doing great, but remarketing is great. Um, you know, we we now run you know eighty percent of the, the budget that we have for Pinterest. It's remarketing is great. It's delivering because customers, you know, they probably search something else on Pinterest. They see us in a, a, a retargeting ad, and they're getting reminded, and they they purchase. So that's that's it's a you know, it's great. I mean, if you use tools like NordBeam or Tripwire or the other tools, you can see you know, hey. You know what the customer does, and sometimes it's crazy. They're 
they're growing, you know, they're growing, they're seeing your ad in Google or seeing Facebook or Pinterest, they're, they're jumping back and forth and clicking and so on. And, and especially if you're in the space where, where your product's not $20 or $30 and it's, if it's fine, you still have to do it. But if it's a bit more expensive, it's not, you can't expect the customer to go, oh yeah, it's a nice hat, 300 bucks. Yeah, it's nothing. You give me that hat, you know. I would I would wish that's the case. It's not the case. You know, not everyone is just gonna go ahead and purchase your product. Um, you know, so so that's that's why you know um, you have to be in those channels. You have to at least do remarketing if you don't have much of a budget. Uh, but believe me, customers is, is the journey is crazy. Uh, TI. So, so yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, attribution systems or tools are a must, at least for us for clients in multiple channels i mean who isn't in multiple channels now if they control the communication is a different thing but people are talking about them for sure in multiple channels but um something i wanted to ask you was that i mean how we you know some some brands as we said in the beginning of the conversation you know it's tougher than before or harder than before to be profitable in the first purchase or to be as profitable as before in the first purchase, you know, costs are going up for brands overall, not only the advertising costs, and then the advertising platforms are inaccurate or more inaccurate as than before. So what do you think brands should do? Do you think brands should still be, you know, allocating a budget for the customer acquisition cost associated to the ROAS or do you think it should be a different thing? Yeah, it, it, it's a very good question. I it, it I was I was, you know, obviously, you know, running ads and ads. I was focused a lot on ROAS. I guess a lot of you know guys that are watching it was like, hey, you know, my ROAS is it's not there and I'm not gonna run it or whatever. Uh I had to get away from that. I mean that's what I think. Um I'm more on the you know media efficiency ratio. Uh, you know, getting all the all the spend that we have, you know, realistically, uh, hey, what's the revenue? What's obviously what we're trying to use, you know, using Google Analytics, and now we're, we're just finishing implementing GA4 uh, with all the you know uh, tracking tools and so on. Um, you know, you want to you want to be sure, hey, you know, what do I spend as a whole in marketing? Uh, and what is what I get out. Uh, if you go from channel to channel, sometimes look at at uh, at, at, at just raw us on one channel and it's not performing. You know, hey, maybe one channel is feeding the other channel. Uh, we, by fact, saw that if we don't run, uh, you know, in a certain way, Google ad, uh, Facebook ads, Google performs less as well. That's the case for us. I might make agree, for, but that's. We did it a lot with, with some tests, you know, we, we decreased spending on in Facebook um, by a lot, and then we saw just Google, you know, drop it. Um, and, and overall, on the back end, we saw, hey, oh, uh, revenue is down. Um, so, so one channel might be more top of the funnel, even though if it's not performing well, it's, you know, it's generating that, that audience that, that's getting converted on another channel. So... Yeah. So we can't really just, you know, just take Ross as a, you know, the customer acquisition cost. Obviously, you have to start to see the lifetime value. Hey, you know, what, what, what I'm willing to to spend to acquire customers, uh, or a customer. Um, you know, but at the same time, you have to we talk about what is my return rate, cost return rate. Um, you know, can I cross sell them? Can I upsell them? Uh, you know. When do they come back and, and buy again? You know, um, I think Shopify a few months ago implemented as well. I mean, we were using tools before that, but the cohort cohort analysis. You know, so you have to see, you know, hey, how long does it take the customer for the customers to come back and buy from you? Um, you have to take that into consideration. But if you just look at the ROS, I mean, it's fine if you want to do if you're in a budget. But today with all the tracking. You know, issues uh, everyone's running is running into from Google to Facebook. You know, everyone's saying it's just Facebook. It's not. It's uh, it's Google really. Google is is lacking a lot lately. So so I will. I will, you have to. 
you have to be smarter, you have to spend more time, you have to work harder, you have to use more tools to spend more money, to hire more, perhaps more people, you have to work with agencies. Uh, if if you if you know if you probably cannot do everything in the house, but that's that's how you know that's how how you have to approach it. You know, the old ways again are over. Yeah, I think you said it better than I could say it. So thank you for your time. Thank you for delivering uh, great value today. Before we go, I wanted to ask you one thing. You know, whenever I invite someone on the show. I'm curious about what they read, if they read, right? So uh, I wanted to ask you about, I don't know, any favorite books that you might have to recommend to the audience. We, for everyone listening or watching, we put together a list of books in 2022 and we are doing the same this year. So of course, I will add the one that you mentioned or the ones you mentioned to the list. Sure. Well, um, I, I, I I do have a lot of favorites, but I will mention a few one that I like. Um, one is Cash for Tizing from, uh, I think, Eric Whitman. Uh, I like that one. Uh, 100 Million Offers, Alex Omozi. I think it's a classic one. Um, Breakthrough Advertising, I think that's a very, very classic one, Eugene Schwartz. Um, that's a few ones that I kind of, I actually read it more than once. Uh, but yeah, that, that's some of my favorites because I know I read them more than once. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't want to make your list huge. So, uh, so, so th those three you can take those three. Awesome! No, I, I love them. I read two of those three, so I love them. And I, everything will be in the show notes at the ddcpodcast.com. Uh, so uh, make sure to go there, check the, click on the on the you know episode. And then you will find the show notes if you are not already there, of course. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other, make sure to go there to get the show notes. Um, so Dario, I wanted to thank you for being here on the show. Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, uh, where can people go to learn more about you and your company? Or, you know, Eric Javis. Well, uh, they can find me on LinkedIn. Um, um, and and ericjobs.com, ericjobs.com. I uh, can see more about what we sell. Um, you know, uh, we we we're, we're we're expanding our you know our um you know we're not just doing hats, bags, and shoes. We're looking into other categories. So you know, if you, if you like some products, obviously you know maybe maybe I can tell Brian if you, you know can get some if you if you like or you want to give a gift to your wife or. Your husband, you know, uh, you know, we can we can get you some some promo codes as well. And so, you know, you, uh, you can go to Brian's website and and maybe get some some uh, promo codes and if you like the products. <laughs> so we we can have a promo code in the show notes, of course. So, uh, Dario, again, thank you for being here. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you for having. Me. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by BSR Digital. We help DTC brands grow through paid ads and email marketing campaigns. If you'd like us to help your business grow, head on over to bsrdigital.com and schedule a call with us.